Welcome to the Summer of the Arts Creative Conversations. My name is Karen Cubby and I'm co-owner of Beatology Iowa. We are celebrating our 35th anniversary this year as a local full service bead store and I'm here with a good friend of mine. Hi, my name is Alicia Velasquez and I'm the owner of the House of Don Clergy located here in Iowa City. I am the first woman Native American owned business here in Iowa City and I'm very proud and honored to be here and just the amount of support that I've got from the community has been great. And we connect all the time and we yes. have a really good time together <laughs> and we support each other. I and mean, the other day I was trying to remember like, how did we first meet? But you remembered. The first time we met, I walked into your bead store because I was missing an ear hook for one of my earrings I created. And um, I remember you standing at the counter with your beautiful smile and you're, it, it was just so, you were just so warm. Well, we certainly try to welcome people, right? <laughs> Right, so thank you for that feedback because being a, being a local retailer, you want to welcome people. So yes. I'm glad that you felt yeah, welcome I felt when you very, first came in. I felt very welcome um, walking into your space. And you know, you were there at the counter and I shared with you my earring and we talked about... And I slobbered a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, um, you, and you were very helpful, very kind and very helpful in me picking the right piece. And I needed that because I was stuck. As the designer, sometimes we get stuck and we don't know uh, what direction we need to go. So by you explaining um, the different options that I had just really helped um, create that relationship that we have now. You know, I was able to trust you and felt that you were always going to be there to just to help me. And so that was just, it was a beautiful moment for me because um, having somebody else to talk to about your designs and about the construction of a piece is very important. Mm -hmm. And we share some lingo yes. and we share yes. some materials, but I know that you invited me to come see your booth at Summer of the Arts yes, for that's Arts right. Fest. That's right. And of course I wanted to come <laughs> because I wanted to see like the body of your work. And I love to see people's booths because I did art fairs for 25 years and I'm always curious about that stuff. And it, the, the booth was just beautiful. The work was beautiful. You were just beautiful. <laughs> I love that you had that big paper sign with your face on it and the long earrings were mm. just phenomenal. <laughs> so I was really glad that I had some time to come by and see your booth and I'm glad that the art fair scene has been good for you. Yes, it has. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but yeah. it, it's, it's amazing to have that support, you know, mm -hmm. especially from you. Um, because you've been in the industry for a while, you understand the technical parts. And a lot of people don't understand that when it comes to design, they just figure, oh, I'm gonna create a beautiful piece and then <laughs> it doesn't work right. It falls apart or it's too heavy. So to be able to have um, a person in my corner to be able to say, hey, okay, I'm creating this, these big humongous earrings. What uh, would be the right um, hook to put on so that it doesn't cause to, uh, fall off or mm -hmm. yeah yeah I know the other thing that's been really helpful to me in our relationship is that not every artist can run a successful business whether it's art fair scene or brick and mortar mm -hmm. and you're doing both and it's hard to balance all of that because when you need to be at an art fair that's when people will need to be at your gallery and so um, I know that you don't want to do too many of those but it's one thing to be an artist, it's another thing to be a teacher, and then it's another thing to be a good retailer. And all of the management and legal stuff and accounting stuff that has to happen. And you and, you and I ha have that knack to be able to go on both sides of our brain and we help each other out in that way. I mean, like, I, I know that we've shared some templates with you, so mm -hmm. you didn't have to start from scratch, but when you talked about how you wanted to run your business. It's like, I need this thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, I have that thing. I can share that thing. Because you already knew what you needed. Right. Why should you start from the beginning when someone who's in your corner and that we're in each other's corners can help out? So we just have this spirit of collaboration that I really appreciate as a business person, but just as an artist and as a person. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, that, that in so many ways it could be set up that we're competitors. And maybe at some level we are, but not really. 
we can we cross refer people to each other all the time and we've honed in like just not any metal work repair should I say right. to you you're interested only in certain area of that and so all of that like our clear communication our um, how much we like each other <laughs> <laughs> that's important <laughs> And I think the other thing that we're trying to do in both our businesses is create community space. Yes. So will you talk about what you're doing with well, yeah, your, and your go, bead circles? And I think it, you know, you have been a huge impact in my life in the sense of my business and my designs because I have someone that I can just bounce ideas off of and I love that. And you're not going to steal my designs or you're not going to... Um, give me false um, information so that I don't succeed. And, and, and we, we see that <laughs> no a sabotage. lot. No sabotage. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I see that a lot, you know. <clears throat> and so to have this, this mentor partnership, friendship that we have is really important. And I, I would love for other people to have this as well, you know, because it's just so important to have that um, the support in your corner, especially when you're barely starting out. And I even think about little things like I had some friends who owned a guitar shop in North Liberty mm -hmm. and they closed their business just when I was coming into beatology. And it's like I was complaining about how expensive just folding chairs were. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we have 30, we'll give them to you. Yeah. So I had the chairs I needed, but now that I've moved into a smaller space, I don't need all the chairs. Sometimes you need chairs. Yes. So you would come to my house and pick up chairs yes. from my garage, and then it's like, why don't you just keep 10? Yeah. Technically, they belong to us still, but there's no sense going back and forth. Take those 10, right. you know? And, and, that's, and that's huge because like, you know, now I'm doing a beating circle. So my beating circle, um, we do it once a month and it's for um, indigenous women where we can get together because culturally what we do is um, we sit around a kitchen table, drink coffee, have some snacks, but also um, do our bead work. And it's some, a place where it's almost like um, knitting circles. You know, women get together and they, they do their craft, but they also talk about social issues, talk about, you know, being a mom and just different things, right? And um, I'm able to offer that. So those 10 chairs actually help um, with the beating circle because I need chairs. And so instead of buying 10 chairs, <laughs> I'm able to call you up and say, hey, can I borrow your chairs? And I think that's a huge, that it's just chairs, yes, but it's huge, you know? Um, so I really love that we're able to do that. And even going down to the business part where going, um, purchasing together you know we purchase from the same places so why not purchase in bulk and we get a bigger discount right. and we get all these different benefits we're going in together and so i think this relationship that we have is it's just so rewarding mm -hmm. in so many different levels you yeah know? and i think it was really good to pass on this collaborative purchasing that we did when mm -hmm. we both got some grant money from the yes. city of iowa city mm -hmm. and in our grant report we could say like our individual money went further because we purchased collaboratively yes. and it makes my minimum get there quicker mm -hmm. or I can get to my minimum quicker with your add-on yeah. and um, then we both get the biggest discount possible so um, it's an awesome yeah thing. it's fun I like yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> because I can go shopping and, uh, <laughs> and not have to worry about paying all these extra fees as opposed, you know, because we're um, collaborating. So I mm -hmm. think that's amazing. I think one of the funnest things for me is when you had this opportunity to go to Paris to Fashion Week. Yes. And will you just talk about that ex <laughs> that opportunity and what was happening? And then when we you were designing this earring, we did we just brainstormed on my chalkboard yes. for a while. It was and super fun. It was amazing because, yeah, it was something that happened overnight. Um, I didn't have time to plan. So I only had less than a month, I'm thinking, to create a design for the runway so I was commissioned to create um, a beautiful earring a big statement earring for um, one of the musicians that was going to uh, perform on the runway and so I ran frantically to Beatology, <laughs> talked to Karen, and I was like, what am I going to do? I have no clue what I'm going to do. I know. How my first I question <laughs> was, how does she move? How much? Is she a wild string player or mm -hmm. is she very steadfast right and, yeah and I'm like, I don't <laughs> because because that will make a difference yes. for the design yes. I was, that was the first thing that popped into but my it head was, it was 
that you know, even though I was so stressed and overwhelmed and like unsure of myself, by coming to you, you know, you're just like, okay, let's go on the board. And so you <laughs> went on the board and you just started drawing, and I'm like, no, not like this, like this, and and that just really helped. It really calmed my nerves, and it's like, oh, I got this. I can do this. Okay, I know what I'm doing. And that piece that we did, you know, that you helped me draw on the board, was just something that I'm like, okay, that helped brainstorm and helped me figure out, okay, no, I don't like this. I like this. And um, but yeah, it was an amazing opportunity. And then be able just to go into your store after having that idea, then I can go into your store and be like, okay, I want this. I want this. I want this. <laughs> and it just it worked. And I love that, you know, because I, as a small business, I can't buy everything. Uh-huh. I can't invest. That's just ridiculous. But to be able to walk into your store and just say, okay, I want these beads. I want those beads. Move beads around. Mm-hmm. Play around with them. And then be able to say, okay, I know what I want. You know, and having that is, it's almost like a privilege to have. So I can walk in your store and be like, okay, that, you know, I want to do all this. But it's great because when you've been in business 35 years, you do accumulate inventory. Yes. And some of our inventory is really old school. And just like with fashion, things come back yes. around. And so those things start moving again. And it's just, I mean, we have over, we have like a quarter of a million different items in our yes, stores. because I, I counted them. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you helped us with inventory. Another way we define us as a community bead store is we had 25 volunteers come into, like locusts coming in and counting everything. So um, the other thing that I really like, I guess it's kind of a repeat of what you were just saying, is that you don't have to have everything. I have a little Alicia stack upstairs of of some specific seed beads that we won't sell to others and you'll get them over time Mm. and what you don't get we'll put back out on the floor. And so it just feels really good and it's kind of paving the way I think Um, there there have been lots of examples of collaborative businesses in our community not necessarily arts oriented businesses but um, I think women tend to collaborate more naturally more more easily than men and between us it just like I didn't make a conscious decision oh I want to collaborate as a business with this person it was more like, she's lovely, she's artistic, I'd like to hang out with her, <laughs> right? Yeah. But all of this kind of the business end piece of it just kind of happened, you know? And now we could just have this solid base. Mm-hmm. And we have lots of common people too. Yes. So we have some customers that come to both of us. Yep. Uh, we have some um, uh, suppliers that are in common that mm-hmm. are national, but we also, there's a private collection that some of the things in the private collection were more appropriate for your gallery and mm-hmm. some more appropriate for our store. So it's just great. Like when I was going through that collection, I found something that was like, oh, this is so beautiful. I want this in our store, but it really is for Alicia. Yeah. So I put it in the Alicia <laughs> pile. <laughs> and, and I love that. You know, I love our collaboration. I love you know, it's it's hard because sometimes it's really hard to trust people, you know, mm-hmm. and you never know if people are are going to be there to hurt you and to sabotage, like you said mm-hmm. earlier, or really help and support. And so, but something when I first met you, I just felt like it was meant to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like we were kindred spirits. Uh-huh. You know, and um, it was just just something about like you said it was just something and it just morphed into what it, I wasn't expecting you to be my mentor I wasn't expecting all the things that you've done for me that was not my expectation my expectation was like this woman owns a bead store and I can come in here whenever I want <laughs> <laughs> and look at all the pretty shiny beads right but it because we were very transparent in the beginning because you know we both share the same love for um, art and well done art and beads, you know, it's just like, it was a perfect match. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that we share that maybe we didn't know right away is bringing our social values and our political views Mm -hmm. into our business. Mm -hmm. And will you talk a little bit about your Dangerous Women Bead (laughs) t-shirt and where that comes from? um, You know, uh, Deadly Women Bead, Deadly Women, Deadly is a slang word in the Native community for awesome, badass, 
I don't know if I can say that. Um, <laughs> uh, just, just amazing, you know, on fire. And uh, so we use that slang word and we put that deadly women bead. And we are um, amazing women that do amazing things. And what we do with our bead work is we're not just creating beautiful pieces, but we have we are doing it to remember our tradition and keep our tradition alive. We do it to show our love. We do it to, um, we beat if other women can't beat, you know, those who are, um, can't do that anymore, our elderly who can't beat anymore. And so it's just something that we do that is just tradition. It's part of our tradition. And so when I started this um, community, event for indigenous women. It's all about keeping our tradition alive and using our techniques that we've used for many, many, many years and generations and keeping it alive and showing it to the younger generation. Um, so it's it's a project and a lot of the, uh, anything that I sell, like my t-shirts, posters, stickers, anything that we sell with the word deadly women bead on it goes to help, um, goes to um, help with missing and murdered indigenous women. Something that is very, um, it's hard for me to talk about because my sister-in-law was murdered and left for found dead on the res and so was my brother, um, was murdered as well. So as indigenous people, sometimes it's hard. We don't have the resources or the money and all that to be able to get, um, the right lawyers, the right you know, investigators. Mm -hmm. So to, this is a way to fund that work. This is a way to fund that work because Great Plains Action Society, which is a nonprofit here in Iowa, um, they, they do the groundwork. They actually go out and find, they do searches to find the bodies. They do, um, they do a lot of things to help the families, to make sure that the families are being taken care of and if there's anything that that the families need, you know, any type of resources, they help them with that. So part of the proceeds of this is going to help them continue their work. In and that's with great. So them. anyone can wear these, right? You don't have no. to be native to wear them. No, anybody can them. wear it because it, if you so, do beadwork, you're deadly. <laughs> so <laughs> right? how can people get one? We have coffee cups, right? Don't yes, I cups? do. I'm starting a brand new um, collection. We're adding more. So we're having coffee cups. We're having tote bags, T-shirts, stickers. Um, just a, a lot of little different things. Eventually, I'm going to come up with a beading kit that you can start off with. Um, so there's a lot of things that are happening within this year. Um, but yeah, they can purchase it at my store locally, or they can purchase it on the website. Mm -hmm. What's the website? Mm -hmm. um, it is www.dotlizhi.com. So Don Cluji. Excellent. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, I remember you did some programming with the American Indian Student Association or the, the teens that came in for a summer program through the university. Yes. And I, I know you were really wanting it to be very traditional. So you wanted yes. it to be like kitchen, grandma's kitchen table, and you were going to go to all the Goodwills and car uh -huh. closets and get claws. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I have the old-fashioned looking claws. They'll even be stained. <laughs> so they'll really look like grandma's kitchen. And it was really and some small way that we could contribute to yes. the feel that you were trying to create. But that was really important it to you. It was. And it was, it, was, it was cute because one of the kids like, oh, my grandma has this thing. <laughs> Tablecloth. I told I you. Dying. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And, and that's because the kids knew right away when they came in. Because traditionally, that's how we do it. We do it on the kitchen table. Right, and so the kids knew when they came in, and it felt like home f for them, and mm -hmm. and and they started sharing their stories, like, uh -huh. oh, I remember my grandmother, or I remember my auntie, and all these different stories that they had. So, so then they got more connected with each mm -hmm. other too, because they had that shared experience. Yeah, because these kids came from all different tribes, so they're not they weren't just from a squawky tribe; they were right. from all over the United States. So for them to see that, okay, we're all the same; we all mm -hmm. have that common. Um, ground and um, so it was really good for them to, um, and then of course you know teaching them how to do beadwork was just hilarious but uh, and, and a little overwhelming uh -huh. but you know <laughs> it's, kids. so a lot of times people think we artists are pretty isolated right right and so for us we're like huddled yes. over doing our stitching 
Um, but you've, you know, both of our business, we invite people in, we invite people yes. to gather, and it's kind of like exactly what Summer of the Arts does all year long, whether it's film or music or art fairs, you know. Yes. So we're right up the alley of Summer of the Arts. Well, yeah, because I think it's really important. Community is huge. Community yeah. is huge. And community across all different cultures is is huge as well mm -hmm. you know and that's what some of the arts is is bringing all these different art forms um, from all different cultures together so that people can um, learn about that and that's what I love about going to some of the arts and having my booth there um, because I'm bringing education to Iowa I'm bringing back the indigenous um, form of beadwork and other art back to Iowa. And and it's just the, it, the conversations that I have with customers, the conversations that I have with onlookers, people who come, you know, and I'm all about that, educating them and letting them know, hey, this is something that we've done. And, and also beadwork is not just for indigenous people. Beadwork has been around in all, every culture. If you really look at it, every culture has its form of beadwork Oh, yeah, if you look style. at every continent. Yes, yes, yes. And, and there's then, lots of crossover because exactly. a lot of European, as European colonialists, colonialists mm -hmm. came into mm -hmm. North America, shared those, yes. and there was a blending. I mean, every every aspect of beadwork, you mm -hmm. can see the blending of whether it's the materials or the techniques or the stringing yeah. and the trading of things. And so, um, like, we do a lot of classes every week, and mm -hmm. one of our challenges is to really create a good learning atmosphere mm -hmm. so that whether you have zero experience, and we're even talking to you about how do you sit and hold yes. things, and, um, you know, I'm always trying to figure out a name for how I teach people to hold their beadwork. And it, it's, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to use the word like the missionary position because it's like <laughs> standard, but it's, so it's just the beading position, right. Right? right? But we try to start from the very beginning and make sure people are really comfortable mm. because if they're, they're little tiny things and the needles have little <laughs> tiny eyes in them and they're even just hard to get the yes. thread in. And so all those tricks, which a mm. lot of artists won't share, Yes. We're doing some sharing of that mm -hmm. so that more people can understand the various beading art forms that mm -hmm. there are. And and even if they decide not to proceed, they have an appreciation. So when yes. they go to Arts Fest and they see your yes. beadwork, they're like, oh, I tried to do that at Karen's place. Yes. <laughs> that was really hard. I'll just buy one from Alicia. And I, and I get that a lot, too. <laughs> I get a lot of women come by, like, yeah, I did a class. And like, OK, I cannot do what you do. How do you do this? And, and I love that, you know, because it shows that I'm not just sitting here just creating something for no reason, right? Or it takes me five minutes to get it done. No, it takes a lot of time. So to have those people come and say that to me, it's it makes me feel good. <laughs> and like, then there's also all these people who can accomplish that. Yes. And then you see people rise up. And that's why especially mm -hmm. I like it when younger people are in our classes, especially if they're kind of quiet or they don't, they feel like they don't know who they are and they can accomplish something with beading and have people say they can go to school. Oh, that is so cool. Well, they rise up. Mm. I made that. Yeah. I mean, I experienced that as a sixth grader taking my beadwork yeah. to school to <laughs> Helen Lemmy. And um, it's really something that can help you find yourself figuring out what art forms you like to do. And um, at our place, we're lucky in that we have guest instructors that come yeah. in to do the mm -hmm. fancy and beautiful wire work that I'm not as accomplished at. And we have the scientific glass blower from the university mm -hmm. come in and do glass classes. I teach a lot of the other glass classes. And um, I, I actually schedule a glass class to force me to take time to get on the torch and hone my skills for that class. And that's how I get torch time yeah. because it's super fun and I don't get enough of it. So what's next for you? Um, wow. I mean, I know you always have a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I, my goal this year is just to really um, be consistent with a collection, you know, making sure that I create 
because I, I guess I have ADD. I'm not too sure, but I bounce around everywhere and I'm constantly, I do this project, then this project. Um, so my goal this year is to really focus and get cohesive collections throughout the year, at least four if possible. Um, so one that I have is about to launch. Um, I'm about to launch it in February, so I'm really excited for that. And we'll see where it goes. But yeah, there's, there's so many things. Um, so just always follow me on Instagram, you know, Facebook, because I try to post as much as I can of what's happening. But it's just exciting. This is going to be a very good year. I feel it, and I know it is. <laughs> so. so besides your collections that mm. you create, you have from this private collection a beautiful palette of old school native oh, work. Will yes. you talk about that a little bit? Because it's just quite lovely. Yeah, <laughs> um, I do. I have um, a small collection of vintage uh, Native American jewelry um, that uh, I got, I guess, last year. And um, it's, it's so special because the artists that are there have been artists from that I've been, you know, oohing and eyeing over. So to see their work and touch and feel, and even to look at how they constructed the piece, uh -huh. is um, is really amazing. So it's something that I really love, and um, I'm I'm so honored to have that that collection there at the studio. Mm -hmm. so. And for us this year, we we have collected so many large private collections mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of sweat equity as you know yes to identify things to clean things to restring things and get them ready for people but they have been an important part of our inventory in terms of things i might not have looked at mm -hmm. but we put it out and people are excited about it and so my goal is every month to get some things out from the varied private collections yes. that we have it's inventory that is sitting there it's ready for people to view and work with yes and so um, one of my favorite things is when someone comes into the store and they go oh they have this <laughs> visceral reaction to a finished piece of work mm or to um, a strand of beads and f for us like there's the beauty of working at a bead store i mean we you're just surrounded by beautiful things all day so it's fun to come to work right but on the business side we're really lucky that we have a line of finished jewelry that we've created ourselves we do repairs and custom work we have the classroom and we have our retail floor. So if one piece of it isn't doing so well and rents do, mm -hmm. another facet of our business. Right. Um, and so that's why we call ourselves a full business or a full service bead store. And you have many facets to your business too. And I think that's gonna help you. I mean, you started in COVID. You have survived. <laughs> You're a year and a quarter old, yeah. your gallery is. And you've worked really hard to Stay present, and I hope people find you and make you busier than ever. Yes, but not too busy. <laughs> I'm a one-woman show, so I'm not too busy. But um, yes, it, it's been it's amazing, and I really, I really do want to thank you know some of the arts for believing in me and taking a chance on me in the very beginning. I remember when I walked in, I applied online and I had to come in and the amount of just like, ooh, you know, uh, from the women here were just so excited to see me and they were just so impressed with my jewelry and that made me feel welcome, you know, to the community. But um, some of the arts is something that um, every designer should be participating in, especially here in Iowa. So, all right. Yeah. Well, I'll see you at my place. I'll see you at your yeah. place, and I'll see you <laughs> at Arts Fest. Yes. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us at uh, Creative Conversations, and make sure you're supporting Summer of the Arts. Mm -hmm.